Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you two different ways of controlling UI components. And specifically, we're going to control the behavior of one UI component based on the behavior of another. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. And to use as an example, I'm just going to use a really simple accordion component. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to tap on the first one and then that's gonna open, it's gonna push the second one down. Let's jump over into the finished thing and I can show you exactly what that looks like. Okay, so here I am in Protopie and I've got two scenes here. I've just got a completed scene and a start scene. So we're just gonna just hang out in the completed scene for a minute. And I'm just going to open up preview. So here we've got our two accordions and I'm going to be able to tap on the first one and you can see that it opens out and it also pushes the second one down. Okay, so there's, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, the first way we're gonna look at is using a protopy trigger called Chain. And Chain is a feature that allows you to connect any property of one object to any property of another object. So you can obviously connect all sorts of different things. In this example, we're gonna be connecting the height of the first accordion to the position of the second accordion. So let's have a look and see how we do that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this accordion one I've got here. And this is just something I've created inside of Protopie. No, no Figma in here, just basically some, some basic rectangles and containers, Protopie containers. Okay, so I've got my accordion here and I'm gonna come over and add a tap trigger. So obviously tap triggers are the most fundamental thing in Protopie, so a tap trigger allows us to add interaction to our object. So adding a tap trigger there, and inside of the tap trigger, I'm going to add a scale response. So scale response allows us to, add, to effectively change the size of an object, okay? And there's, there's a couple of different ways we can use scale. I'm going to stick to um, scale by size. So you can also scale by factor, which is effectively percentage. But I'm just gonna scale by size, which, is, which allows me to give a, an actual value, okay? And within the size, I'm gonna use the scale to property. So I'm gonna to scale to a specific value. And that specific value is gonna be a height value and it's gonna be 300, 300 pixels. It could be anything, but I'm gonna choose 300 pixels. Okay, so we can have a quick look at that and see what that does. So that effectively allows us to scale our object. You can see now our accordion has effectively expanded, but nothing's moving. So we haven't really connected it to anything yet. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a chain trigger. So chain trigger is in this kind of group of triggers called conditional triggers. And you can think of chain as a continuous conditional trigger. So it's continuously gonna be looking at whatever object you connect it to and it's gonna make changes um, every time a change happens. Okay. So we're gonna add a chain trigger here. And we want to chain to the property of accordion one. So chain kind of looks at the, the the object that you want to chain to. Okay, so the object is actually moving. So in this instance, it's gonna be accordion one. And we can also then connect the property that we specifically want to look at. So accordion one, like all objects in Probi, has a number of properties. We've got X, Y, width, height, rotation. So all of these properties are chainable. In this particular instance, we want to kind of have a look at the height property. So we're gonna choose the accordion one's height property. We're gonna say, hey, accordion one height property, when you change, I want you to do something else, okay? So we've got that chain set up. Inside of chain, we now need to add a response which is connecting to our second accordion and we're gonna use the move response. So you can see here, when I open up the, the dialogue here, you can see there's only some properties that are chainable inside of chain. So not all of them are usable. Not all of them will be applicable but um, we actually only want to use the move property, so that's all good for us. And we want to move accordion two, okay? So we need to choose our second accordion here. And you can see here, we've got a kind of crazy looking box here. So chain has a very specific kind of panel with very specific values that we need to fill in. Okay, so the first thing we've got is the range. So that's the range of movement or the range of change that the first 
object is going to take. So in this instance, it's going to be the accordion one object. So we're going to say, so the accordion one object starts at a height of 50. So we can see here, if we come over to accordion one, we can see it's got a height of 50. And it's going to go to whatever height, that we, the maximum height we want it to be. And as you saw, we've made that 300. So we're going to type in 300 here. So between 50 and 300, that's going to be the range of change. So based on that range of change, what do we want our second object's range of change to be? So as you can see, we've chosen, because we've chosen the height property, inside of this move response, we've got X and Y. So we can actually change the height or the width. And we're actually going to change the Y, the y value here because we're moving. And we need to think about how far does that second accordion object need to move to track the position. So it's not actually tracking the position. We're just kind of working it out in a kind of literal sense, so a physical value. So we know that if we come back to accordion two, we can see that its y value is currently 60, and accordion one's y value is currently zero. So accordion two is, is effectively 60 pixels further down. So we know, we know we just need to add 60 to the value, okay? So if the, if the height of accordion one is 50, then the position of accordion two is gonna be its starting position, and we can come back and refer to this accordion to position 60. So we're going to type 60 in here. Then when the accordion one opens up from 50 to 300, so it's fully open, we need to move it. We need to basically add 300 pixels to it. Okay, because we want to have a one to one mapping. You can actually change that ratio. So you can have something moving like one and a half times the distance or twice the distance, but we want a one to one mapping. So we're just going to add 360. Okay, so you can kind of read these across. So range one starts at 50 and the position of the second accordion starts at 60 because it's effectively 60 down. There's a little 10 pixel gap. And then when range, the second part of the range of accordion one goes to 300, then the Y position of the accordion two is also gonna to go to 360. So it's gonna maintain that position. Okay, so that's all we need to do. So we can come over and we can preview this. So I'm going to move this over here. And then let's open up our accordion and you can see, okay, so you can see we've got a slight um, mismatch here. So let's have a look and see we've got uh, the distance has actually gone more. So why is that? So we've obviously got our range wrong here. So actually what this needs to be is 310. And the reason for that is that the second accordion is only 10 pixels away from the bottom of the first accordion, okay? So let's just go back to the original values because I threw a slight red herring in there. So our accordion one is 50 high and our accordion two is actually 60. So it's actually only 10 pixels lower than the height of the first accordion. Okay, so it's only 10 pixels that we need to kind of move it to. So we come back here, we can see now that 60 to 310, um, as in 10 pixels more, that's the only the distance we need to, we need to track. So let's run that again. And there you can see now we've got a one-to-one -one mapping, okay? So that's the first way that we could do this. Um, there is another way we can do it and it requires us to use formulas. So let's have a look at that in the next part of the video. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna look at how we can do the same interaction, but using formulas. Um, we can talk about why we might wanna use one over the other after. So let's just kind of get through the how we do it. Okay, so I've got my same file set up. So my same tap trigger is all exactly the same. I've just turned off chain. So you can do that just by turning off this switch that effectively disables those interactions. And I'm going to instead add a detect trigger. And detect allows us to detect changes in the properties of other objects. So we kind of point it at something, we say, listen to this object and let us know when something's changed, okay? So the property we want to listen to, if you can have a guess, what do you think the property is that we need to listen to? That's right, it's gonna be the, the, the height property, right? Because we're changing the height of the accordion. Okay, so we need to choose the height property here. So accordion one's height property, that's what we're gonna to listen to when that changes. So 
Inside of this detect trigger, we're also gonna add a move response. And we're gonna choose accordion two, because that's the, that's the object we want to move. And we want to move its Y position like we did before. So we need to put a formula inside of the Y value field. So if you tap into the Y field and you hit the FX icon, that's gonna open up the formula window. And the first thing we want to find, so we need to do a little bit of maths here. So this is, you know, arguably a little bit more complex. So we're just gonna open up um, our our drop down, which gives us all of our objects. So we want to find, so we need to kind of figure out, you know, what the distance is gonna be. So it's going to be the accordion's Y position plus the accordion's height plus that 10 pixels that we've got that's in the distance, the distance between the two, okay? So we need to kind of like chain all of that together in a formula. So first we're gonna choose accordion one and we're gonna hit, hit a dot. So this allows us to chain a property to our, to our kind of object. So we're gonna find its Y property. So accordion one Y, so that's gonna give us the Y position. We're gonna to add to that. Again, we're gonna find accordion one and we want its height property, okay? So we're now adding the Y position plus the height. And then finally, we need to add a plus 10 because we want to maintain that 10 pixel gap, okay? So that's the entirety of our formula. And we're gonna click OK. The other thing we need to do when we're using this kind of way is we need to disable any animation that's going on this move trigger because it's just going to, it's going to be additive to the animation that's already happening. So when the, the formula moves the object, that's animation already happening. The duration is just going to put a weird delay on that. So we need to set the duration to zero and just allow the, the kind of connecting of the two properties to control the animation, okay? So that's all we need to do. So let's open up preview. And then if we open up the first accordion, you can see there it's exactly the same. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two, but now we're using formulas to control that instead of chain, okay? So that's the two different ways that you can do it. So why, why might you want to use one uh, over the other? So if we go back and have a look at chain, and we're just gonna open that out. If you look at this, what do you think is the difference between these values? And I'm gonna open up detect, and this formula, what's the difference? So that's right. So in chain, we have to actually put the real values in, okay? So we have to know those values. And in this case we do, okay? So we know, that it starts at 50, it's gonna to open to 300, that's a known value. And, and because we have a known value, we can also track it with another known value because we know what it's gonna to move to. But what if we didn't know that value? What if the, the height of the, the UI component was gonna change? We wouldn't be able to keep changing that value. We'd need to, it would be an unknown value effectively. So if we're in a situation with an unknown value, then we wanna use the detect and the formula approach because it will always give us the actual value of these objects because it's, it's finding those, what we call at runtime. So when the prototype loads, it's going to grab those values at that point, okay? So that's why we might want to do it with the, with the formula, okay? Really useful when you're starting to build components and you don't know what these values are going to be. But there you go, two different ways of doing it. If you do know the values, it's arguably quicker to use chain. Chain's a little bit easier to understand. So, um, and also it gives you some other things for free as well, as we saw in my previous video. Um, whereas formulas is a little bit more robust, um, but you, you, you maybe have to do a few more things, depending on what you're doing, you may have to do a few more things where you might not get some of those things for free, okay? So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to continue on with this, this accordion. And I'm gonna add, I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you two different ways of controlling the state. So as you can see in this particular prototype, we can open it, but we can't close it. So how do we close it? Well, we need to manage state. We need to know the open state and the closed state. And I'm gonna show you two ways of being able to do that in the next video. So hopefully see you then. Take it easy.